Climate change and these big issues have no national boundaries. Everything is porous. All those boundaries are porous. And that's why we're all here, so that we can work together. Extremely important. And you're change agents. Every single one of you are change agents. And you're bold and you're courageous. And you're getting ready and you're, most of you are already there for a huge conceptual shift a consciousness shift and the bedrock of that of all the things we've been talking about and will be talking about is that the economies are actually subservient to the natural world not the other way around so we're doing this all of us are doing this for all all beings and we're reaching out to each other as philanthropists as activists as visionaries in order to address the global situation. We're at a very interesting era in, hu in human history and this era is called a rescue mission. We're in a rescue mission and a restore mission for planet Earth. So the sustainability goals, we've talked about those. There are 17 of them. And this is the menu. This is the menu for the future. And philanthropists have an amazing opportunity to frame their work and their projects, whatever country you come from, around that. So what are some of the really big problems? One of them is population, which you know doesn't have, maybe it should be SDG 18. This is Nigeria. This is LA, United States. Mexico City, 24 million. Shanghai, and our oceans. We've talked about rivers and clean water. Oceans are very, under a lot of stress and one of those stresses is pollution and I don't know if you know this or not but uh, by 2050 there will be more tons of plastic than fish in the ocean if we don't clean up and waste waste in food in Asia the United States <clears throat> and Europe 40 percent of all food is wasted while others are starving and that hunger, ending ha hunger, number two in the SDGs. Life below, life above. The kind of energy that we're going after, the tar sands. Oil, 80% has to stay in the ground. How do we do that? How do we actually do that as philanthropists? How do we engage with government leaders and business to keep that 80% in the ground so that we don't go over 2% Celsius. And consumerism, that's another one. We need to be consumer educators, consumer citizens. Everything we buy affects everybody else in the world. Responsible consumption, that's SDG 12. We're losing species at dramatic, and also our pollinators. 70% of the pollinators, that's another area of real concern where philanthropists and farmers can come together. 70% have been lost. 40% last year in the United States alone. We've leveled old growth forests. Reforestation is a huge possibility and we have incredible extreme weather. And this is Shanghai on the left is four degrees Celsius in global warming. On the right is two degrees. So it comes down to our values and that's why you're all here. What do we choose? We have an opportunity to choose. And what's next? Huge possibility. 
huge possibility in every problem, in every uh, magnificent situation where we're up against a wall is tremendous opportunity in all sectors. This, a young man, 18, 19 years old, he designed this to clean up the plastic out of the ocean. He crowdfunded himself. That's was, that was how he got his philanthropy. He crowdfunded himself. 2.2 million. If we clean up our oceans the way he wants it to be done, that's what we'll have. Reforestation. Keeping our forests intact. 12% of old growth forest, that's all that's left. So the Congo and the Amazon, we have to look beyond our national boundaries. These, this makes oxygen, fresh water, huge challenge. And species, keeping our species diversity intact. And right now I wanted to bring this up, elephants, there were 12 million elephants in Africa at the turn of the century, there's now 350,000 and they're going at 100 a day, 10% of the population a year. Bison is one of the, the stories of success that has come back from 200 individuals and now there's about 500,000 in the U.S. and Canada. Organic farms, another keeping small scale farmers intact. Philanthropists can do a lot. Here's a big idea, and this can actually happen. This is solar energy arrays on suspensions, very large suspensions, over partial shade crops. So it's a multi-benefit investment. Buildings, as you all know, have come a long way. Electric cars that plug into renewable energy sources. This is a big idea. This is happening in India right now. These are the solar rays on suspension over canals, reducing evaporation substantially. This is a new technology that captures flare gas out of oil and gas wells, turns it into electricity on site. The white roof, that's another one that needs to go to scale where distributed energy can't, can't be installed for whatever reason, white roofs. And sustainability schools, we're going to be talking about education and sustainable education. Kids should be in a school that is net zero. They should be living in the school that is demonstrating the very things that they're learning. This is a big idea. This is the only women's climate ag agenda in the world. 128 different countries were involved in this. Funding women is huge opportunity. And half Earth, now that is a really big idea. So hopefully we don't end up with just looking at our biodiversity as a projection on a building. And that we have the opportunity as philanthropists to come together in collaborations that we've never even thought of before. And that's part of what this forum is about. How do we make those partnerships? How do we collaborate at the global level? And use our wisdom and know that it's intergenerational, what we're doing here. And that's the menu, that's the map. And it's for all of us. So thank you. over nature.